Good morning. Good morning. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Oh, we're, we're all awake, aren't we? Good morning. Well, welcome. My name is Lisa Lai, and I'm the head of volunteer management, and I am delighted to see so many volunteers and staff joining us this morning. Before we begin, just a friendly reminder to please turn off any cell phone or electronic devices. This morning's lecture with Dr. Wilfred Zeisler will focus on the Russian porcelain reinstallation, which took place at Hillwood in 2016 and in 2017, incorporating an exceptional long-term loan of about 30 Russian porcelain pieces. This lecture will explore the evolution of the display of the Russian porcelain collection Marjorie Post Homes, as well as the history of several masterpieces on view in Hillwood's mansion. Dr. Wilfred Zeisler is Hillwood's chief curator and co-chair of exhibitions, having previously served as the curator of Russian and 19th century art, as well as Hillwood's first curatorial fellow in early 2013. He's the graduate of Sorbonne University and the École de Louvre in Paris. Wilfred has written extensively on the decorative arts in France and Russia, including a 2010 book on ceramics, as well as several articles. Wilford's dissertation, French Abde d'Art and Luxury Goods in Russia, 1881 to 1917, was published in 2014. He has participated in and curated exhibitions in Paris and Monaco. At Hillwood, he has curated Splendor and Surprise, Elegant Containers, Antique to Modern in 2015, and Konstantin Makovsky, the Tsar's Painter in 2016. Wilford also co-authored the latter exhibitions and company book, Konstantin Makovsky, the Tsar's Painter in America and Paris in 2015. I hope you all know uh, by now he's currently working on a book on Hillwood's Fabergé collection that will accompany an exhibition on the subject next June in 2018. Very exciting. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Wilfred Zeisler. Thank you very much, Lisa. So it's a great pleasure for me to be with you today and to give you a short presentation of the many changes that recently happened in our uh, display of Russian porcelain at Hillwood. So uh, for an introduction, I will give you a, a bit of explanation why we did these changes, and then we will uh, go over the, the whole presentation. So first of all, I mean, the idea of like refreshing, I will say, uh, the presentation of the Russian porcelain here at Hillwood was uh, sort of um, uh, Liana Paredes, our um, uh, chief curator, um, before a former chief curator will ask me first to uh, review this presentation and to um, the goals were actually to enhance the interpretation and the display of the collection but also to present uh, long-term loans that we already had uh, in our collection and also new acquisition major acquisition that Hillwood had made but the pieces were not on display so for that we had to review the whole presentation but the main task in reviewing this presentation was also to follow Marjorie Post's vision for her collection and how she used to display her collection. So to uh, review this presentation and this Russian porcelain displays, we had I had to study also how actually this porcelain was displayed or used to be displayed in Marjorie's homes. And Actually, this first project was achieved in uh, the end of the summer of 2016, and a few months later, when it was achieved, we found out that we could got we could get a fantastic um, loan of more than 30 pieces of porcelain. And so we said, hmm, why not? Um, so it's just, we just reinstalled everything and you all got actually a sort of like description and presentation of this new display. And since we could have this fantastic um, loan, we decided to take it and we had to review and reinstall all the objects so to change again a bit of this new display. So today it will be a sort of like summary of what we did, so why we did the 2016 and why we did the 2017 installation here at Hillwood. So first of all I will give you a a bit of information about the first step in this project, which was like the study of Marjorie as post displays of Russian porcelain in her different homes. And then we will study most, more, we will look into the main room here at Hillwood about Russian porcelain, which is like the Russian porcelain room and what we did in that room. And then the last point will be about mostly the long-term loans, the one that we already had that we displayed and the one we got uh, this year. Um, so let's start with the presentation of um, Marjorie's displays of Russian porcelain in her different homes. 
Actually, the oldest image I was able to find of Marjorie's presenting a, a presentation of Russian porcelain was from the late 30s uh, in a case that actually you may recognize. It's still at Hillwood. It's a case that you have on the second floor hall. Uh, it used to be on view in a very important point. It was in the formal staircase at the American Embassy in Brussels, how it is photographed now in 1939. So it means that when you were invited to the embassy, one of the first aspect of the collection on view at the embassy that you will see was actually the Russian porcelain presenting in that case. And as you know, Marjorie was not only collecting porcelain that she already collected before she went to Russia, she had already an interest for porcelain in general, and especially French porcelain, but she became afterward a great collector of Russian porcelain, and she will not only display her collection, but she will also use her collection, as you will see. And here in this display, you can already recognize some of the major pieces that we still have in our collection collection, such as the Hall of Service, which is partly on view here, that she acquired in 1937, or here, the Garner Service, which is still on view, and I will show you some images of the service later. And as you can see, though, this display focused mostly on her major first acquisition and mostly tea and coffee services. And as I said, she will display her porcelain but she will also use her porcelain. And here it's one of what she said in her, di uh, in her um, scrapbooks, the first use of her um, order services for uh, a formal dinner she had at the embassy on January 18th, 1939. And she will mix actually both of two of our order services. So the order services are these very famous orders with like a design inspired by the Russian military or highest um, orders. And she began to collect actually this porcelain uh, which were which was commissioned originally by Captain the Great in the late 18th century. She began to collect this porcelain in Russia in the late 30s. And uh, she uh, said that she bought these pieces months after months, I quote, collecting it here and there. And she lists Leningrad, Moscow, Warsaw, Vichy, Paris, London. So that's where Marjorie bought all of these pieces that were sold after the revolution to recreate these services. And on this table in 1939, she will use part of her St. George pieces and St. Vladimir pieces. And even in the center, she will put this large vase uh, from another service, but which had these older ornaments from the Baryatinsky family. And just to make it like look uh, well together, but she so this vase, you know it, uh, it's still on view in our mansion. So she used it at one point to add on her table. Here, the first use of this service. So as I said, always collecting, but also using some of her collection. So after um, Brussels, well, <laughs> yes. Trigaron. Um, as you can see, we can follow actually the same case. It's the same one that we just saw in Brussels, so now it's in Trigaron. And here in this room, uh, which is a very beautiful room opening um, to, I mean, open to the garden with like this really interesting design, a trellis design on the walls and with some building um, um, cases, as you can see here. So I think it's a sort of like precursor or, precursor or ancestor of our Russian porcelain room. This is where actually Marjorie displayed most of her Russian porcelain and her Russian glass as well. And in that case, um, so the one you start to know very well now, uh, you can still find some PC from the famous Hall of Service, the same pieces that we had in Brussels, pieces from the Garner service I just mentioned. And here also another service, which was not actually on view in the previous um, image, Soviet porcelain. So she already had an interest to tell actually the whole story about the development of Russian porcelain from the foundation of the Imperial Porcelain Factory in 1744, but also after the revolution when the factory became, the Imperial Factory became the national uh, factory known as the Lomonosov State Porcelain Factory. And she had on view in that room this very famous service, which is still on view here at Hillwood in the same case, uh, which was created in 1937 to commemorate um, the uh, death of one of the Russian heroes, which be 
who was also a hero for Soviet Russia, Alexander Pushkin, who died in 1837. And so for that, they created the service in 1937, was a time when Marjorie actually was in Russia. And uh, each piece de has a design related to um, Pushkin and the city of Pushkin, so the former Tsarsky SLO, and each piece has a monument, a sculpture, or building which is related to uh, Pushkin's life. So as you can see, she displayed also tea and coffee service, so like this case was mostly dedicated, dedicated to this kind of porcelain. And after Trigaron, of course, we go to Hillwood. Here we are in the 70s. Our case, again, uh, upstairs on the second floor, you can see it looks a bit different. It's very crowded. Um, a lot of frames, uh, family frames, uh, on each piece of furniture that we cannot leave on view right today because, you know, with all the visitors, you, can leave, you cannot leave so many objects on view. Uh, but the case um, still have, um, so the pieces from the, the Gardner service uh, and all the services we already uh, saw um, before. And so as you can see, even this case was always used to display porcelain and mostly tea and coffee service. It has changed many, many times, so which left us with some like um, liberty to actually do uh, a new presentation, but following the idea which was Russian porcelain and tea and coffee. And this is what we did in 2016. Of course, it looks already different, but the professional photos are not ready yet, so I couldn't show them to you. So that's the first new installation, but you will see some photos later of how it looks like now with the uh, um, new long-term loans. But still, the idea was to continue to focus on Russian porcelain tea and coffee service, but to make it uh, easier to interpret and to explain to visitors, so I decided to present it in a chronological way. So, meaning we start with the older service here, which is like the all of service from the reign of Catherine the Great, and it goes chronologically like that until the late early 20th century with the Soviet porcelain and the example of the Pushkin service. So that was actually the idea to follow Marjorie's vision but also to add and enhance the interpretation and the presentation of the porcelain so that if you need and if you want to tell the whole story, you have enough example in that case to tell the history of uh, mostly the imperial porcelain factory. So here we have like the uh, Grigory Hall of Service, which is now on view in that case. So it moved from the former case where it was, and actually it's easier now to present it without having a La too large crowd, I will say, in front of the case and the staircase. And um, it's also actually was historically in that case that this service was presented, and it's a way to present it in a, diff in a better way, I think. So one of these masterpieces um, that is an early service commissioned by Catherine Great, but I know you are, most of uh, you are aware of the story of this wonderful uh, service, and that Marjorie found it in France in Vichy in 1937. So it's one of her very early purchase of Russian porcelain. And we have this service, a Garner service to the right, which is a very interesting piece as well in our collection from the 1820s, which is a very nice example, an early example of, of how actually Russian design become to be more and more inspired and influenced by um, Russian folklore and Russian peasant life. So it's a way how progressively um, a national style was developed. So by using, I mean, the shape of the service is still very European and very traditional, very neoclassical, but the design and the subjects painting on this porcelain is inspired by traditional uh, folk, by, by peasant life and by traditional costumes. So it's a new way to um, uh, look into like uh, Russian um, traditions and to develop a national style, as I said. And what was what is actually new in this presentation in the fact that I brought in that case these um, figurines, which are porcelain figurines, the one on the left, um, which are typical of that period and good example also of this new use of national uh, models and um, costumes like the sarafan as you can see here and the kokoshnik and as you can see this design on this figurine is exactly similar to the one that you can see on the on the um, uh, tea and coffee service so and these figurines used to be on view but in the breakfast room so you couldn't see them so to bring them upstairs was a way to show them also connected to other objects telling the same story 
And of course, um, the changes didn't affect only uh, this uh, main case that we follow from 1937 to, uh, 90s to today's, I would say, in, at Hillwood, but also the new installation um, happened in the most important room uh, where you can see a Russian porcelain here at Hillwood, which is a Russian porcelain room, but which will be also called, I would say, the Russian and glass porcelain and glass room. Uh, this room, as I said, might have been like um, the result of what Marjorie created for as Strigaron, having all these cases in that same room with porcelain and glass, but was created here at Hillwood. And as you will see, it has evolved a lot uh, during the, different, the from the 50s to, to nowadays. But still, you can feel and you will see how the main focus of each case had still still the same, and we followed the same focus for each case. So here is a view of this room in the 60s. As you can see, the cases are less crowded than today. Uh, but still, if you look closely to some of these cases, you can see how, how it is today. This case focused mostly on St. George service, and this one on St. Vladimir, so the two main or important uh, porcelain order services that we have in our collection, both commissioned by Catherine the Great from Gardner. Uh, the Gardner factory is a private factory, but you can see that um, at that time, Marjorie didn't have like enough uh, objects yet so that the um, large porcelain platter, here you can see, which are like bread and salt platters, which are now outside the cases, are still in the case. So at one point, because of the growth of the collection, and you will see that in the next slide, in the 70s, so it looks already like a bit more crowded, as you can see, and so these platters are now outside the cases, so it, it, it left room to show more pieces and to present more pieces in the cases. So here, again, it's the same view, and it shows exactly the same 10 years later, and you can see that actually it's still um, organized with the same kind of order. So the, which are the main topics for each case, so the um, St. George order here and the St. Vladimir here, and it's the same for the other cases. And that's what we followed to do the reinstallation in um, last summer in 2016. So here it is. Um, so following the models, even they were, became more and more crowded, but following Marjorie's ideas and first um, presentations. So the room is mostly dedicated to services and to the older services. So it begins with the St. Andrew services. So not only the St. Andrew which was commissioned by Catherine the Great um, from uh, Gardner, but also pieces from Meissen, so earlier pieces, because St. Andrew was one the highest service, so you had several services made uh, for the court. So it's like not only one service, but different services related to St. Andrew. Then you have this very crowded case here, which was the one who changed most often during the lifetime of the collection, I will say from the 50s to the 60s, even today it has changed so many times. Even at one point during Marjorie's time, you had like some Soviet plates in that case, so it was really different. So that's where we felt we were like free. I mean, it has changed so much that we could do and change it a bit more. And it's actually the idea is to focus mostly in this case on the major services um, that were produced or made for the court or for the high uh, society in Russia. And then, didn't change so much since Marjorie moved uh, to Hillwood, so um, the uh, St. Alexander Nevsky service and then the street cases dedicated to uh, St. George. And then here the three cases dedicated to St. Vladimir. And at the end, not so many changes as well, mostly pieces related to the time of Nikolai I, and with a special focus on the military plates, which even some of these plates are from the late 19th century, because it was a tradition that started with Nikolai I, but they were produced um, several times and during different reigns, but still it's really mostly the period of Nikolai I, which is shown here. 
And uh, as I mentioned, so one of the reason, uh, the first reason why we wanted to refresh uh, the display in the mansion and in the Russian porcelain room was to, as I said, enhance the presentation, follow Marjorie's uh, vision for her collection, but also include long-term loans and also new acquisitions. And what actually Marjorie uh, says when she mentioned about new acquisition for the museum, she said, quote, items of significance to the museum's existing collections. So that's what we can acquire. And these things we are always acquiring, so items of significance to our collections, and that were not always on view. And so we tried to select some of those when it made sense and was relevant to the presentation and to our collection, and to show them uh, in this new presentation. I, I don't have time to show you all of these uh, pieces that we, dis we decided to show, but I will focus on some of those and show you how it makes sense to have them on view. So first of all, it's not an acquisition, but it was a piece that was actually on view in the second floor, but was somehow lost in the display and not very, um, I mean, not presented as as an imp as a, it's an important piece which was not really presented as, as important as it should be. And I brought it from the second floor to the Russian porcelain room because this is the only plate we have from the Yusupov porcelain workshop. And since uh, we have a lot of objects related to the Yusupov family in our collection, including a few pieces in the Russian porcelain room, I thought it made sense to have all these pieces all together. So if you needed, you could tell the whole Yusupov story at the same place. And this is a really interesting um, example of a very rare example. It's, perfect. it's dated 1826. It was a workshop that was created by Nikolai Borisovich Yusupov which was this major collector of the Yusupov family who actually uh, gathered his collection in Hangelskoye, his um, uh, palace in the suburb of Moscow, which is actually called uh, Versailles of Moscow. And in that place, he actually opened his own workshop of porcelain. So he actually brought um, craftsmen and also uh, to work with him and to create porcelain for his own use, but also to be given as gifts from him when he had host or like uh, to be presented. And we have one of these plates, which is really typical with this kind of, with these flower ornaments uh, in our collection. And I thought it was great to show it next to other use of pieces in the same uh, area in the Russian porcelain room. And then a new acquisition. So this was um, acquired in 20 th 2006. It's a dessert plate from the Mikhailovsky service. So we had actually no piece in our collection from that service. So it made perfect sense to, uh, um, as an institution, uh, telling the story of Russian porcelain and having such an interest for services and setting tables that we uh, acquire this piece, and which is also very interesting because it's a dessert plate which, and all the plates from that dessert service, which was made for Grand Duke Mikhail Pavlovich, so the brother of Nikolai I, one of the sons of um, uh, Paul I, and each plate of that service uh, had actually a painting af made in porcelain, I mean, a painting on porcelain made after much masterpieces from the Hermitage, from the Imperial Collection. And our piece as a portrait of a boy after a painting from uh, Jean-Baptiste Perrono, which is still at the Hermitage, as you can see here uh, to the left. And this plate was, so a great acquisition the museum made, made in 2006, and actually it's related to other pieces on view in the Russian porcelain room. That's why I decided to show it there, because in the case where you will see it in a moment, where it's on view right now, you have this large plat plate um, from the Imperial Porcelain Factory, which actually show Grand Duke Mikhail Pavlovich and his wife, Grandchess Elena Pavlovna, and so the owner and commissioner of the service um, so from the plates I just showed you, so it makes somehow complete sense. And also in the same case, we have military plates, as I mentioned, from the reign of Nikolai I, and it's known that Grand Duke Mikhail Pavlovich was a collector of these kind of plates and had a large number of military plates in his collection. Not necessarily the plates that we have at Hillwood, but similar ones, which as you know, there were several sets made of these um, military plates. And here it is uh, how 
it looks like today. So you can see we add this new acquisition here. And here you have the large platter with the port of the Grand Duke and his wife and all the military plates uh, which reflect, which show, I mean, the taste of the time. And also, I didn't mention, but when we did this display, uh, we also uh, sometimes, I mean, it doesn't look exactly how it was at the time of Marjorie Post, but we, as I said, it follows her first idea about what is in the, each case and also her taste for symmetry and order. Everything is always really has always a reason when you look at the cases. It has always when you have a large piece to the left, you will have a large one to the right. So it's always the same kind of like tasteful symmetry and, and rhythm. And we are trying always to follow the same idea when we uh, change the display in a case. So where I am right now? Um, here. Yes, and another um, piece um, I was very happy to include uh, in that display because, as I said, it's a Russian porcelain room that has also a lot of Russian glass. And actually, in 2003, the museum acquired this wonderful uh, double-walled beaker you see on the left from the Bakhmetev factory, which is one of these private factories. Um, in Russia, and this is a really uh, amazing piece which was um, made by Vershin in the chief workmaster. Um, and it's like, so you have double wall of glass and in between uh, you have an insert of a design, a miniature design made of wood and other material to create a sort of like miniature landscape and scenes, and this is like really a, a, a masterpiece of craftsmanship. It's very rare, and there are only a few known all over the world, like mo a bit more than a dozen of pieces like that are known in the world, so it made completely sense for us to acquire it in 2003. And it was most of the time in storage, so now uh, I will say it's on view, as you can see it here. So. In, the, uh, in this case, and it's actually a case, as I said, most of the pieces are from the period of Nikolai I. So first, I mean, Alexander I, Nikolai I, so first quarter, first half uh, of the 19th century. So it's also a logic um, um, location for this piece. But as I said, so the a new uh, display and the new presentation was not only so, it was always to follow Marjorie's post vision, but it was not only to enhance the presentation, not only to include uh, new acquisitions, it was also to include long term loads. So that brings me to my last um, uh, part here of this uh, presentation. So long-term loans, as you will see, we won't only focus in that part to uh, long-term loans. We will also look into other um, uh, pieces from um, our collection. But of course, when you actually change a presentation, when you include a new piece in our presentation, you, in, a, in our presentation or in our display, you always have to move something else. So that's why when you include a piece, a long-term loan, then you have to move you know, a piece from our own collection. So it's kind of like always difficult. That's why when we had like this, as I said in the introduction, we had this first display done, we were like, yay, it's done. And then, oh, 30 pieces. Mm. I really want them, but all right. So I have to say our registrar, MJ Hagen, who did a great job with me to reinstall all these cases, was like, oh. but, <laughs> but I mean, now I promise no loans anymore. <laughs> I don't know if I'm, I don't know if it will happen, but I, I will try. So long-term loans. I mean, we will then speak of the third major space where we have porcelain here at Hillwood. So second floor hall, we started with that because of the historic case, which is the oldest, I mean, like this case that we use in the display, that we know from um, Marjorie's, that Marjorie used for her display of Russian porcelain, then the Russian porcelain and the pavilion. So here's an image of the 50s. As you can see, it looks completely different, but that logic because it was not a museum, it was a house and it was mostly her movie theater and her place for entertainment. So you will see big difference, 50s, 70s. So it's actually another vision already. 
Marjorie Post is aware that she will, cre she will create a museum, she will do major acquisition that she might have not have done if she wouldn't know she would do a museum, like the Makovsky painting or the Blue Love painting, which both were acquired in the late 60s, and cases were added with porcelain and glass. And you know the story about these cases, that it was like, Ross, Marjorie's first curator, wanted to add these cases, and Marjorie was not so happy with that. And as she said in a note to him in 1963 about adding these cases, quote, this, this I do not like at all. I think you have heard me hold forth quite a number of times about not getting Hillwood too crowded and too full. It is bad enough the way it is. <laughs> End of quote, 1963, and so you can see, I mean, when you love uh, collecting, when you love buying uh, beautiful objects at one point, you have to have new cases, so that's what happened here. So these cases were included, so between the late 60s and early 70s, so at a time when actually, so Hillwood was building somehow as a museum, and um, these cases had like porcelain and glass, but most of the displays actually changed a lot again, and also were somehow pieces which were repetition of the kind of pieces you could v see in the Russian porcelain room or in other spaces in the house. So it was like more repetition than like telling a real story. So the idea here was to reinterpret these cases to just like bring stories in each case with object work we had, and again, to include objects that we got from loans, that we acquired, or that were in storage or lost in a sort of like this too crowded display. So one thing we did first, remember we had a case dedicated to Sevres porcelain with a GP Morgan service, and it was the only case with porcelain, with Sevres porcelain, French porcelain, 18th century porcelain in that, in the pavilion. So with the other cases filled with Russian porcelain or Russian glass. So we decided to move the GP Morgan service upstairs. So we won the case somehow um, in, um, in, in, the, in, the, in the pavilion to put more Russian porcelain. So that's how the GP Morgan service looked like upstairs and actually it looks far more better I think than it used to be in the pavilion and also it makes sense with the case next to it with all these like 18th century uh, English enameled pieces which are in the somehow same, from the same period and showing how um, serf porcelain was inspired creation also in enamel. And then in the pavilion, so it was an opportunity to show in one of the cases, so these, ser this set of porcelains, I mean this series of porcelain from the Soviet period, most of them museum acquisitions, but related to the time when Marjorie Post was uh, in Russia, so in the, in the 30s, with um, so this very important plate, which is one of these from the 1920s, one of these early Soviet porcelain plate with very early Soviet um, symbols of the new regime painted on it. And what I like about this plate is the fact that the whites, I mean the porcelain, still have the marks of the period of Nikolai II, so was produced before the revolution, had the Nikolai II marks on the back, but then were only painted after the revolution. So it's like a mix of two regimes on one um, a plate. And then we have um, this set, um, this desk set of porcelain, so the, from the late 30s by the very famous Soviet designer Natalia Danko. And um, all the pieces were actually museum acquisitions, like this central one, the inkwell, and then the other ones here were acquired more recently. And so um, they are were acquired because they were related to the time when Marjorie um, was in Russia. So it was a very nice way to display these um, pieces. And also we had actually uh, pieces, which was uh, pieces from a long-term loan from the same lender that we got after World 30 other pieces. So she had already um, lent to us many um, 
um, I can give her actually her name, Kathleen Durdin, who um, uh, is a great collector of uh, Russian porcelain. And she lent, we have a very uh, long um, relationship with her for, for many years, and she already lent a lot of pieces to our museum, but which were not all on view and on display. So that's why we wanted to have them on view. And now we got even more. So uh, here was a, the idea was to show these um, pieces to the left. Uh, which are hers, the porcelain ones. The glass is Hillwood's, but the porcelain is hers. And these are like pieces from two very similar services which were produced in the late 18th century, the 1780s, uh, commissioned by Catherine the Great from the Imperial Porcelain Factory in St. Petersburg. They are all, uh, you know, very neoclassical design, most likely uh, inspired by the famous French um, cameo service. So as it is shown here with these like ornaments, so and that's why they are called the arabesque service because they are inspired by these by these arabesque motifs. And Hillwood had only one plate from that service, the yacht service, so which is here to the right. That's Hillwood's piece. You can see it in the Russian porcelain room. And so we got an additional piece from that service from Captain Durdin here. And the two other ones, very similar, are from the arabesque service. So which is um, the second service. The first one is from 1784, the Arabic service. And the only second one is the yacht serving from the late 80s. And um, they are really similar. So you can really mix them. But we had only one piece. And now we have several. And now we have pieces from the Arabic service, what they didn't have before. So which is really why we accept this kind of loans. is also to enhance our collection with pieces that we don't have. And also the new display was a way not only to show these long-term loans, but also to show in a better way or in a different way pieces that were for most of them in storage. And we have a large number of pieces from the cabinet service, which is a very important service commissioned around 1793 so sorry, by Catherine the Great. And this is a wonderful service from the late 18th century with this beautiful uh, naturalistic rim with these wonderful flowers. And each piece has actually a design in the center, a scene after engravings showing Italian views, which is like very typical of this late uh, 19th century uh, taste and style. And this service was actually commissioned in 1793 for Count Alexander Besborotko. And this new display Give, gave us the opportunity, as you can see here, and here you have a detail, to show this painting from our collection, from Marjorie Post's collection, that used to be in storage. And now it's on view, and it's directly related. It's a portrait of Count Alexander Besborotko, who actually received that service. He was commissioned by Catherine Great for him. So uh, that's why it's great to have these two uh, uh, together, the service and the painting. And this service has a very specific design which was very successful and inspired many other services that were created and commissioned in the late 18th century in Russia. And now right in front of that case on the other side um, of the pavilion you have this other case with other pieces, other services which were inspired by the cabinet service including a set of different services, what we call usually the um, Dory services. And the Dory services were all commissioned, um, starting with Kastner Great and mostly by Paul I, to be given each Dory service to um, one of the, to the daughters of Paul I when they got, when they got married for their wedding as gifts. And they are all based on the same design, same shape than the cabinet service, but they are all different somehow because of the ornaments of the rim. And for example, here you can see it's a rim with rows, but they are like in a specific design. This one is a bit different. They are more naturalistic. And this one is again different. And Hillwood had actually pieces from two of these Dory services. The main one we have even more in storage is the Grand Duchess Maria Pavlovna um, Dory service, which is like here and here and here. So which was um, created um, when Grand Duchess Maria, so the daughter of Paul I, married Grand Duke of, Sex, of Saxe Weimar in 1804, Karl Friedrich. And then we had a plate here, a platter here, with a different design, which is known as the um, 
Württemberg service, but which was also a Dory service made for Grand Duchess um, Ekaterina Pavlovna. And this was actually a museum acquisition a few years ago. And we didn't have any pieces from the Ekaterina Pavlovna service, which is here. And that's why we were very happy to get them from Kathleen Durdin. Um, so long-term loans, other example of the Dory services, but from another one from Grand Duchess Alexandra Pavlovna. And also the same service inspired us another one, which was commissioned by Nikolai Yusupov, the Prince Yusupov. When he was the head of the Imperial Porcelain Factory, he commissioned a service that he gave as a Christmas gift to uh, Emperor Paul I in 1798. And this service was named um, so the Yusupov service, even it never belonged to the Yusupov, it belonged to the emperor, it was given by Yusupov to the emperor, and it used the same model as well. And we had no piece from the so-called Yusupov service, but Kathleen Durdin had, so we asked for that plate here from around 1798, which is also shown in that case, which tells the whole story behind, I will say, the design, which was first created for the cabinet service and then used and reinterpreted for the Dory service and finally for the Yusupov service, which are all now on view. Unfortunately, we don't have pieces for each Dory services. We are still missing one, um, and which is not represented in our collection, but who knows, maybe one day um, we will find one of these pieces. Um, and the same case has another piece which is very important and very uh, interesting, which is like these figurines, um, which is most likely it's very rare, this kind of pieces outside Russia. It's most likely a figurines which was produced to be used as the um, surtout de table, so a table ornaments for one of the Dory services. And this is also a long-term loan. And uh, it features the uh, figure of justice. So it's true that we selected these loans um, most often because piece that there were pieces that we didn't have uh, or were not represented in our collection. And that's the case here, and we are very happy about that one. Um, so the platter you can see here to the left, uh, we didn't have any piece from the uh, Green Frog Service, which is one of the major commission made abroad by Catherine the Great. So in the late 18th century, the 17, seven, around 1774, she commissioned that whole service with uh, scenes after engravings showing uh, English landscapes, and the whole service um, um, it's most of the pieces are now um, in, at the Hermitage, so they are like from Wedgwood, and they are very famous because of their symbol, which is like the green frog. And it was like the symbol of one of the palace, uh, the Cheshme Palace, which is in the suburb of Petersburg. And this palace was actually known as a green, I mean, like Grenouillère, because it was built next to a frog marsh. And um, that's why it becomes a symbol of the service from Wedgwood. So it's another example of one of the major commission made by Catherine the Great from foreign factories. And here in the display where we decided to show it in the Russian porcelain room, so you have like a piece which is a later addition, a 19th century addition to the 18th century service, but the cameo service, one of the a very important commission of Catherine the Great from France, an English commission by Catherine the Great, and here a Russian production, but commissioned by Catherine the Great. So it makes also perfect sense to have it here on view. Another service which was not uh, represented in our collection, but is, which is really important in the history of Russian porcelain, is the Guryev service. The Guryev service was produced uh, in the early 19th century during the reign of Alexander I. It's very interesting service because the shape and the design is in general very traditional, very Western, very neoclassical, inspired by Sèvres, but the center of the desert plates are featuring people of Russia, so peasants, um, people uh, wearing traditional Russian costumes, so like actually some of the pieces from the Garner service, which is right after it belonged to the same period. So it's a very important service. It was named Guryev service because Dmitry Guryev was the head of the Imperial Porcelain Factory at that time. And we didn't have any piece, but Kathleen Durdin had. And here they are on view uh, in the uh, second floor hall, uh, you can see so one large platter, two desert plates with these figurines, one salt cellar here from the Goryev service from the early 19th century. And you can see how it can help 
you tell the whole story how progressively Russian designer, Russian art became inspired by Russian tradition, Russian folklore. So you have like one of the earliest example here from the early 19th century and then a more later, and a later service from the 1820s, our Garner service and the figurines here. So you can really uh, tell this whole story now thanks to this loan. And also, I mean, we had loans not only from pieces that were not represented in our collection, but also pieces where we had only one piece or which was not maybe the most significant from the service. And here, for example, there is a, it's a very important service that was commissioned during the reign of, Cat of Nikolai I, the Gothic service, which was an, one of these early service inspired by Gothic revival. So as you can see, the design has here like um, painting um, looking like stained glass, you know, inspired by cathedral uh, windows. And we had actually a bowl from that service. This is our piece, but as you can see, the service which was commissioned in the 30s, 1830s, we have actually a later addition to that service. So it's from the same service, but a late 19th century addition. So Cathy Durin had an earlier piece, which is this amazing piece. <laughs> yeah, I did the same when I saw it. Um, so this is a very beautiful teapot from that Gothic service, which is on view um, in the mansion and the second floor hall in the large case. And it's uh, one from the period, so from the 1830s, as you can see. And I like the fact that it makes this very somehow traditional neoclassical design here with this neo-Gothic here motif. So it's like really showing we are in a period of transition between sort of like uh, research in a new style, a new design, so which is really typical of this uh, reign of Nicolai I and the first half of the 19th century regarding decorative arts. So that's a great addition. And then we had, of course, um, several uh, pieces from Grand Duke um, Konstantin Nikolaevich service from the 1830s, with, 1840s, sorry, which is like one of these major service commissioned um, at the Imperial, from the Imperial Porcelain Factories from Grand Duke Konstantin Nikolaevich, so one of the sons of Nikolai I. And this service is really known for being, you know, one of these major neo-Russian or Russian style um, service um, inspired by, for some motives, by um, uh, old illuminations or um, objects from the Kremlin collection and design actually. Um, it was a time actually when you had like all this restoration of the Kremlin, so it was really, it's, it's a strong example of this Russian revival. And we had only a few plates and a few pieces from that service, and thanks to Katy Durdin, now we have this huge, beautiful um, Turin, as you can see here, the teapot as well, and this wonderful chakra here, so which are all on view, and even a sauce spot, uh, which are all on view now um, in, the, in this case. But, what was just, I think, the major interest for us to get the second long-term loan, this largest one we got in 2017, which is now in view, was actually the set of Russian uh, porcelain figurines. So Hillwood had a few pieces from what we call the peoples of Russia. So these figurines are very interesting. The, um, they are part of the same story of Russia looking very early in its own tradition, its own story, its own folklore. And this commission, the first commission of these figurines happened in the late 18th century, was commissioned by Catherine the Great for a set of figurines which were all um, created by the sculptor uh, Rachet, who was actually one of the major uh, artists working for the Imperial Porcelain Factory. And these series were originally used, so the one that Catherine the Great commissioned, were originally used to adorn center of tables uh, when desserts were served, so they were there to adorn the center of the tables, so used as a surtout de table. And of course, these figurines became very, very popular all over the late 18th century and the 19th century. And Hillwood had two of these figurines, four, sorry. One of a Finnish man here, so each, actually the peoples of Russia, so each figurine show one ethnicity of the empire, most often by couple or some like, you know, traditional um, work uh, hunters or like um, 
pendlers, these kind of like subjects. So here you have the Finnish man from Hillwood, which was from the 18th century. You had like this man from Kamchatka, which was from early 19th century. And then these two figurines from Finnish women, but which were um, from the 19th century and from a private factory, more later edition. But, yes, Kathleen Durdin had a one of the largest collection of this series. So now, um, so we got them. So they are all on view. Um, and so now we are like, if not the largest, the second largest collection of these figurines in the US. Uh, the ones that uh, were collected by Kathleen Durdin, so they are like, they, she collected them for years, uh, years after years. So they are from different sets, of course, but they are for most of them 18th century from the Imperial Porcelain Factory. And here is the photos that she shared, she shared with us of these different uh, people of Russia. And this is how they look like uh, in our display. Um, so here is a detail of the figurines and here is like how it looks with the whole case. Again, this is my photo because we don't have yet the final and professional photos, but they will be ready soon. Um, and here, I mean, this is Hillwood's piece. This is Hillwood's piece here and the rest of these 18th century figurines are from her, and so they are all now on view. And they work very well in that case because I kept at the top here these five pieces which are from our collection and which shows how actually this interest for the people of the Russia continued alongside the, I mean, during the 19th century, but even during the early 20th century because these pieces are part of another uh, series that was commissioned by Nikolai II in the early 20th century. And here are details of these figurines. And these figurines are also named the peoples of Russia, but they are from the early 20th century. And in the early 20th century, Nikolai II commissioned uh, the Imperial Porcelain Factory, especially the sculptor Pavel Kamensky, uh, to create a new series of the people of Russia, but which needed to be uh, as accurate as possible. Because the one from the period of Catherine the Great, they were based on engraving from the 18th century from an ethnographer who went over Russia, but of course they were like created in a more artistic way. The early 20th century one, they had to be really accurate. And they were based on serious campaign of photographies made by scientists all over Russia in the late 19th century, early 20th century. They were based on costumes, folklore costumes, that were kept in the Ethnographic Museum in Petersburg. And actually today, we still have in the Ethnographic Museum in Petersburg the costumes and the photos that were used by Kamensky to create these figurines. And these sets, uh, we have only a few, was never accomplished during the, before the, I mean, during the reign of Nikolai the first, the second, sorry, Nikolai the second, but they were so Soviet in a sense because they were looking into, I will say, you know, uh, the folklores, the different ethnicities of the empire, that the production continued after the revolution. And you have also some of these people of Russia, which were originally created during the reign of Nikolai the second, which were produced in the Soviet period. Our pieces, most of them, the one on view for most of them are from the period of Nikolai II. So that's why actually I think it's really great to have all these series all together. And the last piece I wanted to show you today, which is one piece, a major piece from uh, this long-term loan, yes. It's this wonderful vase, that's my photo, that's why it looks not so great. Um, <laughs> but this is better. Um, so this is a vase from the same collection. It's glass. I know we are supposed to speak about porcelain today, but still. So this is a very rare example of uh, Art Nouveau interpretation and production of the Imperial Glass Factory. You know we don't have so much about Art Nouveau in our collection, so it's great to have an example, a very strong example, which looks like almost a galley or dome production, uh, which was, had a great influence on Russian production at that time. So that's one aspect, Imperial Glass Factory, 1912. Art Nouveau, new for us, interesting and great for us. But also, this vase has a fantastic provenance, which is also very important and was always very important for us and for Marjorie Post. This vase used to belong to Empress Maria Fedorovna. 
So the mother of Nikolai II, the wife of Alexander III, and it was inherited by Grand Duchess Olga, so Maria's daughter. And here you have a watercolor sign Olga, Grand Duchess Olga, showing actually the vase, the vase, as you can see. Oops, sorry. Oops, I don't know what I did, but. Ah. Okay, I'll get it. Sorry. <laughs> So on the watercolor, you can see uh, the vase, how um, Ganges Olga painted it before it came on the market and was acquired by Kathleen Durgin, and now it's on view in our um, collection. So that was the last piece I wanted to show you in that presentation. So uh, as I mentioned in the introduction, an updated um, list, an explanation for all this new display with updated photos will be shared with all the volunteers um, very soon, and so that you can review all of it because I couldn't show you everything. So thank you very much for your intention. You. Yes, there are questions. So Kathleen, Kathleen, Kathleen Durdin, so Kathy Durdin, um, I mean, and sh loans, yes. loans, not donations. Uh, so long-term loans, so they are here with us for about five years. I don't know when you gave that tour, but uh, must have been when we had the first long-term loan. Now we have the... Just about a, a few months ago. She was here with a group... Yeah, it was before we installed the new long-term loan, so I guess it was the... the the arabesque uh, service pieces, the yacht pieces, and we had also other, like, more um, from the KPM service, this kind of, yes, we had already long-term loans from her, and now the one I focused on today are the new loans, so especially the figurines, and that she didn't see yet. I mean, she saw the photos, but she didn't see them on view yet, but she will be here soon, so. So she's just, uh, I mean, she, she's a successful uh, woman. Um, she, I think, was interested first in Imperial Russia, and she then focused most precisely, she has not only porcelain, but she focused more precisely on porcelain, and uh, so she wanted actually to have a collection which will help her, I mean, which will um, um, large enough to tell the story, I will say, of like the whole history of Russian porcelain. So she had mostly imperial porcelain from the imperial porcelain factory and from the foundation, I will say, from the time of Elizabeth I to the late uh, 19th century, early 20th century. And actually her collection traveled in different uh, venues and there is a little catalog um, uh, that I put in the bibliography of the document that we will, will be shared with you and it tells the whole story. But, but her, it's mostly porcelain, yes. And the figurines is something that she really wanted. There is like this kind of like, even today, I know she got one recently and we may have it soon uh, uh, <laughs> to enhance our presentation. But these all are long-term loans, so they will be with us for at least five years. That's another part of our trade. Um, uh, this is also loans for the Fabergé exhibition. So because he, she has some Fabergé pieces that we will get for the exhibition and including uh, tablecloths, which, is not, which are not by Fabergé, but um, that we will use to set the breakfast room table with, I mean, you will see. <laughs> I mean, for the, I think that what she bought while she was in Russia, I think was mostly what was available in Russia. So I mean, she would pick up from what she was able to acquire them. 
and also regarding her own taste in general. She had a general taste for porcelain, so she will focus mostly on porcelain when she was there. So it was primarily happenstance and being the right person at the right place. Yeah, I mean, for, for yeah, I will say, th I mean, so porcelain and then hearthstone, and then her interests, that's maybe something to look into for like religious objects in general. That she, that's what she acquired uh, mostly while in Russia. But actually very early, also she was in touch, I mean, she, was, she had a relation with Wolski in London. I mean, many of the first acqui major acquisitions that were made at that time were made from Wolski in London. So a very important dealer already at that time in Russia, specializing in Russian art. Not only porcelain, but all the as object as well. And she got also a lot of objects from dealers, which are less famous, but in France, for example, who actually were specialized in selling French art and object coming from uh, Russian provenance or with Russian provenances. So that's how, yeah. That answers the question. Yes? Where is the space located? In the pavilion. It's, it's just glass. It's different. <laughs> Sarah, uh, not just glass. It's several layers of... I mean, this is very typical technique of the Art Nouveau period. So you have several, several layers of glass. So with, and each layer has a different color. And then uh, you will work on the surface and just like engrave it so that it will give some relief to the surface. And that's you create this like naturalistic motif, which is like very dark at the outside. and clearer in the inside because you have several layers of glass and then you work from the outside. And this is really typical of this Art Nouveau design, this tasteful naturalistic flowers and foliage, which is really typical of that time, the early 20th century. Oh, yep, last question. From, from the, the pictures of, of the Russian porcelain room, we, we know what Marjorie put, kept there in the 60s and 70s. Yeah. Do we know what she kept below there in the yeah. cupboard storage? Uh, we could know, uh, but I don't know. <laughs> I mean, but obviously there is nothing that, I mean, it was not much storage space, um, so exactly what was stored there, I cannot tell. Um, um, we could find out, but I don't think, because it was never on view somehow, it's storage space. We don't use it anymore as storage space, of course, but yeah, I think it was more like storage space. Um, but you have to know also that some of the furniture, like the cabinet in the icon room, used to be uh, also used as a display case somehow, so you will have the doors open and objects shown in it. So, yeah. Okay, yeah. May I grab the yes. Well, I just wanted to officially thank Wilford for his time today. Uh, and not just with this wonderful lecture of walking us through, um, but also the time that he spent last year and this year working on the document that we'll be sharing soon. So keep your eye on your inboxes. Um, our goal is to have it out in just uh, a few weeks when the next post serial comes out. Wilford has spent a lot of time updating it to include information about the Durden loans um, and then of course making sure that it reflects all of the changes in the last, this year and the previous year. So we really appreciate your time. Um, and as he mentioned, we have professional photographs. That, that's also what we're waiting to include, which will be um, beautiful but helpful for us Thank as an educator. <laughs> I know, <laughs> with your accidental selfies in the mirror display cases. Not that we don't love seeing your face in there. but um, So we look forward to updating that document. Um, and I had to chuckle too a little bit to myself listening to Wilford and Marjorie Post's history of when she bought something new and she would have to make room in the case and I felt it was a good metaphor for us as volunteers. Um, Wilford is giving us such rich stories to share and to think about when we interpret with guests but just as a friendly reminder this is just making your toolbox a little deeper but you know we have to be careful about that one in one out so when you think about you know what you're going to share and hopefully you walk away this morning feeling very inspired about the loans and the new arrangement and the stories that can tell just to be thoughtful too that while our visitors love us and love you I bet they also would like to have lunch and get to the restroom so we're, we're not going to give a four-hour tour um, and of course there's some places here that are better for on-station moments which we have a lot of versus formal tours or if you're a visitor service volunteer chatting so just a friendly reminder for that but ultimately thank you Wilford so much again for all your wonderful work and thank you all for coming now go out and enjoy this gorgeous day